Hey everybody, it's Vance from Holden Direct Care. New Brevi video today. This one's going to show how to use input commands inside of your Brevi abbreviations so that you can make them more powerful and use them in more diverse situations where you'll have uh, a string that you type a lot, but you just have something in the middle of it that's different. An example might be a patient's age, or for instance, if you have a procedure note, uh, I do this a lot on my procedure notes. Maybe I'll change something like the volume of anesthetic I use, so it prompts me. It stops in, in the middle of a in the middle of a script it's typing out, and prompts me for how many CCs I used in that uh, in that procedure. So it's really handy. So uh, first, I'm just going to show you Brevi and show you the example of the script you use to do this. So here comes Brevi. I'm, I'm going to show you my new female script. So it's just a sentence I put the beginning of a um, history and physical on a new patient. And I have new NEWF, and I just type that, and then I hit space bar, and then it starts typing this. And what it types is the patient is A, and then it stops and prompts me with type age and press tab. Your old white female who's in established care's chief complaint is. Okay, so that's how this works, and I'll show you a little bit about it here real quick. So let's switch over to the text document, and I'll give you a demonstration. If I, t if I hit newf, it goes like that, patient is A, then it stops, asks me for the age, hit tab, and it's done. All right, I can do the same thing with new male, N-E-W-M, activate it, put the age in, hit tab, finishes it out. Now, <clears throat> I could very easily put a bunch of more of these input strings just like that for all the other variables, such as their race, uh, their uh, sex, uh, and the pronoun that refers to their sex. The problem is then it's prompting you every three words to finish the sentence, and it takes forever, and it's a lot faster just to make multiple abbreviations. Um, if my if my patient panel was 50-50 white and Native American, for instance, I could make two separate male Native American ones and two separate female Native American ones if I wanted. And then again, it wouldn't um, stop me to prompt me on their on their race. In my case, most of my patients are white, so I just leave it that way. If they're not, I just go in here and just change it to whatever I want. And we're back in business, and we can keep going. So. That's how that works. Now, I want to show you something else about that. So basically, in the script, you just put right here, percent sign, parentheses, input, and then you type what it. You can just put age if you want, question mark, close parentheses. But when you hit tab, it activates it. So I always say type whatever the thing is and press tab so it reminds me what to do. Okay, so let me show you another thing that this thing can do. I started one uh, called NUF2 right here. So I want to show you what this does. It's pretty interesting. It's the same thing. It's got the input name here, is A, and then it says input age again, and then white female into uh, established care. And then it says it was very nice to meet, and it has per percent input name again. But there's something unique about this and what it does. Watch this. It asks you their name. Uh, the, the, it's this for a girl, so um, the name first. And then it asks you for the age tab and established care it was very nice to meet and notice what it did it it asked me it prompted me for the patient's name the first time but it did not prompt me the second time it just knew it so because I entered it here it didn't re, it didn't prompt me when it got back around to it the second time so if you're trying to put together an abbreviation that has a variable that will be the same later in the same abbreviation it uh, is a neat way to speed to save you some time so that is how that works. Now, <clears throat> let me show you how this can work inside of Atlas. Inside of Atlas, there is a uh, command which is patient first name. A macro, I mean. Like that. I'm going to copy that so I can use it later if I need to. So if you do hashtag patient first name inside of the EMR, I'll show it to you really quick. So here's our patient. We're going to do a new note. And as I start that new note, if I put in hashtag patient first name, start over. After a second, it, you see down there in the lower left corner, it pops up. And when you hit enter, it puts it in there, and this is fake patient, so the patient's first name is fake. So watch what happens if I do this example script I made earlier. So I did roids for a hemorrhoid case. If I just hit roids and hit spacebar, this time I don't have to put in their name. 
it did it for me. And the reason is, is because I put hashtag patient first name in the Brevi macro. So it automatically searched Atlas uh, for that macro and then invoked it. I'll show you how that works. And the Brevi, it's right here. My Roid, so hashtag patient first name. This next part is very important. If you've seen my other videos, you have to then say, there's an extra bracket that doesn't need to be there. Um, you have to give it a delay. 2,500 milliseconds usually is enough because the patient's first name is sitting on a server in another town. So it takes, you're at the mercy of the speed of the internet to get back to you with what that is. So if you just go right from this hashtag patient first name right into is here today to discuss, it won't get to it. It'll, it print, it'll just print out hashtag patient first name. You have to give it time to recognize that that's a macro and then the enter key will will choose it. So that's how that works. Um, I think that's all I want to show you today. Hopefully that makes some sense. And if you have any questions about it, feel free to ask anytime. And I will put the scripts that I used in today's uh, demonstration in the uh, uh, description below. Have a great day. God bless you.